Good morning and welcome to the Morning Scoop for Saturday, September 11th. This is your Daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Orr. The Oregon game is today, the game against Michigan in 77 days. There are a couple of very big football games coming up a little later on today involving the Big Ten and Pac-12, including that Ohio State-Oregon game. But this morning, I wanted to talk about another story involving those two conferences that you guys can't ever seem to get enough content about. So that is conference realignment. There are some new developments this week on what the Big Ten may be planning to do. My guest today is Buckeye Scoop's ultimate insider, Nevada Buck. He just posted a big update on the Big Ten's pursuit of some Pac-12 teams. He joins me now to share what he learned. Nevada, thanks for joining me. Hey, thanks, Tom. Good to be here. And uh, big exciting exciting day around uh, Ohio State football and the Big Ten, for sure. Yeah, there, there is an, a lot going on around Columbus and uh, around Ohio State football and the Big Ten all, all today. But, uh, you know, every time we've talked about the Big Ten potentially going after Pac-12 schools, we've talked about it a few times now, the conversation has always started with USC, and that is going to continue to be the case this time. But now there's some additional math to back that up. How much money could adding USC mean for the Big Ten? We've, we've talked a bunch about why this makes sense from USC's end before. Why does this make financial sense for the Big Ten to add USC? Well, you know, one of the requirements when they were talking about Big Ten expansion was that the the Big Ten had asked the broadcast partners to basically look and model out what the potential addition of one team, two teams, three teams, four teams would look like, because obviously the, the math has to work. These things have to add value to this next television contract. And the Big Ten actors actually looking for guarantees from the broadcast partners regarding what that would mean. And so when the numbers kind of got crunched and the, the initial pass came back, it looked like the most attractive potential partner from the, from the, from the uh, Pac-12 was USC, which would add approximately $6 million per year to the television contract, which is not an insignificant number. And so, you know, USC then, and, you know, they've always been attractive. They've always been interesting but now from a financial standpoint it became you know really attractive and and really lucrative for them to continue these conversations then the other side of the question of course is why does this make sense for the trojans to want to join the big 10 i mean that you are they are are famously located out in los angeles which is not anywhere close to big 10 country so you know there has to be a reason why they would want to do this and it sounds like a big part of that answer also centers around money and that could be an even bigger difference on USC's side than it is on the Big Ten side. Yeah, right now, USC really carries the Pac-12 television contract. They, they really are kind of the standard bearer. And just to give some simple you know, math outlines, and don't hold me exactly these numbers, but these are pretty darn close. USC's you know, scheduled to get $26 million a year from the television contract you know, through the 24-25 season. Um, and the new contract on the Pac-12 is estimated to be around $40 million per year, which, in, you know, that sounds good. But when you contrast that to the Big Ten television contract right now, which right as it currently is configured is in the 60s and is expected to go to 80 to $100 million, you're talking about a delta of pr- approximately $50 million per year for them to make a move like this. And that's, you know, that that's, an entire athletic department budget for a, for a big school. So that, that's a lot of money and that can make up you know, that, that type of gap would be very difficult for them to maintain a competitive advantage operating that at a deficit like that. So uh, it certainly makes a lot of financial sense for them to consider it. And, you know, I think we've all seen that stuff that makes sense on paper doesn't always work out in, in real life. So, you know, there's always a question of like internal politics at a school potentially derailing something that Seems like it makes a lot of sense on paper. What are you hearing right now about what's going on behind the scenes at USC on that front? Well, basically, you've got a, a, a small segment of the booster community there that is really, really pushing them to make this move. And, and you know, they have been at odds with, US, with commissioners in the Pac-12 for a, for a number of years, and they're really looking for a fresh start, a more national kind of standing and you know, they want to make this happen, and, and you know, they're really pushing these things to happen. And right now, the, you know, the USC administration has been, been wounded with a kind of a weak president, a weak athletic department, and uh, the boosters are really running the show there, and they're, they're really the ones that are kind of working in, in coordination with the, uh, the major broadcast guys, which incidentally are, are mainly USC guys themselves. So there's a lot of uh, interconnectivity between those two groups. 
you mentioned their issues with the commissioner. So uh, that, that teased me up very nicely for my next question. So Nevada, can you tell me what could be the po- biggest possible hurdle for this deal? Is there anything that could possibly hold this up? I suspect I know the answer. Yeah, well, that's the one big thing in this is that, you know, they've come back and they do not have faith in Kevin Warren to be the, the new head of, of the this mega national organization. And they've expressed as much. That's their number one concern. It's the number one thing that they believe could scuttle the deal. They've talked about, you know, how they've been in, they've seen what, how good commissioners work. They've seen how bad commissioners work. Um, and they've been asking about Kevin Warren and his longevity. And, and, you know, everything kind of falls into place now when you see these comments from Gene Smith and from other people that have been kind of dr- viewed as shots at Kevin Warren. Well, a lot of people believe, and a lot of people from USC believe that's because they're getting ready to move him on and that, that he would be either moving on either voluntarily or, or involuntarily. But until that thing is kind of resolved to their satisfaction, I don't think you're going to see this move made because. They do not want to be part of an organization led by Kevin Warren. And that's, that's as plain as I can put it. That's as plain as they can put it. And, and you know, they were unequivocal about that, that there needs to be a strong commissioner in there. And they don't believe it's their guy either. So it's not like this is like a Pac-12 thing. You know, George is, is very new to the, uh, the Pac-12 thing. And, and frankly, they're, they're not that impressed with him as well. But they know Kevin Warren's not the answer, and they know it needs to be someone different. George Klyovkov at the Pac-12, Jim Phillips at the ACC, Kevin Warren at the Big Ten. All three guys have been on the job, you know, basically a year and a half or less. So that's uh, three three guys who are relatively new at their jobs. And, you know, I think everyone's probably furrowing their brows right now and saying, but what about the alliance? Didn't didn't these three conferences just pinky swear to be best friends forever? How How is that enough? not enough to stop one of these conferences from raiding the other? Uh, you know, what, what are you hearing on that? Is, is the alliance... Uh, that's not all. That's not all. Just nonsense that they had to look like they were doing something, is it? Well, you know, the alliance was always kind of a Kevin Warren thing, and and this is a more of a this is a broadcast thing, and and that was you know, something we had talked about is how Warren had been noticeably absent from these conversations, and we were wondering what he was up to, and then they came out with that historic announcement <laughs> about this, you know, buddies for life alliance thing that doesn't really mean anything, will never be put on paper. And it, you know, isn't going to be documented in any legal way, but is an agreement to agree to agree. Um, so I think, you know, the, the simplest way I can put it is that that's the commissioners did want to be seen as doing something. Um, it's that's really a nothing. This broadcast type of expansion is a real thing, and it's what's really happening right now in the SEC. It's happening right now with the Big 12. You know, Buckeye Scoop, as you're well aware, we were the one that broke the national, we broke it before any of the national outlets about Cincinnati, UCF, Houston, and BYU moving to the Big 12, which will be announced by Friday, I believe, or you know, should have been announced maybe uh, yesterday. But um, you know, you, we, we've been all over that story on expansion. And, uh, you know, that, that's what you get when you listen to the broadcast guys. The broadcast guys generally know these things much more so than, uh, than the alliance guys. The USC piece makes a lot of sense if you're bringing in an extra six million bucks a year. Like that's that is a good amount of money. But I think the assumption is that the Big Ten will not just add one team. I mean, they added one when they brought in Penn State. They added one when they brought in Nebraska. But it seems like you know just adding USC when they're all the way across the country might be a a, a tough sell. So who else? You know, who else could be coming with them? Is it? Is it just one more team? Is it, you know, could this be a four-team edition, a six-team edition? Who else is sort of being discussed, and what's the order of magnitude we're talking about here? I think the order, the, 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 the most likely scenario is two. It would be USC and Oregon, but I think right there with them is Washington and Colorado. I think those are the three most likely dance partners with USC for that. Those three were all plus on the television contract side. Um, you know, you know, Oregon being the smallest, Washington, Washington being around two million dollars a year, Oregon only being around a million dollars a year, and uh, Colorado about the same, about a million dollars a year. So, you know, it was they weren't huge numbers, but they were additive. They weren't dilutive to the overall contract, and uh, they fit the profile, the types of schools that we're looking for. And so, I I think those make sense. Well, just imagine it could be uh, you know five years from now or or so. 
Ohio State and Oregon could be a conference game. Wouldn't wouldn't that be something? Uh, wouldn't that be crazy to think about uh, on on this today when Ohio State and Oregon are playing a non conference game? Uh, boy, it is. This is this is one of those stories that it just is fascinating to follow. We have had all sorts of great information, as Nevada said, on the Ask the Insiders board. It is just one more example of why you need to be a member of BuckeyeScoop.com like today. The only reason you should become a member today is because yesterday's over. So you've missed your chance to be a member yesterday. So now you can you have to do it today. Just sign up today at BuckeyeScoop.com. Get access to our team of insiders, all the great information, all the great content. It's all at BuckeyeScoop.com. It is going to be a busy, busy day there today. We have uh, we will be at the stadium. Tony Gerderman and I will be at the stadium very early this, this morning, along with Kevin Noon, to do our pregame show. That will start probably uh, sometime between 8 and 9 a.m. The best way to make sure you don't miss that is by uh, becoming a subscriber to our YouTube channel. You go to YouTube.com slash Buckeye Scoop. Or just hit the little, if you're already watching this on YouTube, just hit that little bell or hit the uh, Buckeye Scoop logo at the end of this video, and that will subscribe you to our channel. Then you get notified when we go live for our pregame shows, our postgame shows, every time we post a new podcast, every time we post new interviews with players and coaches. It's all free. It's all at youtube.com slash Buckeye Scoop. All you have to do is subscribe, and then you'll never miss a thing. And uh, do make sure you enjoy that game today. This is one that I think everyone's been waiting for for a long, long, long time. We thought we were going to get it last year out in Eugene. We didn't. But now it is finally here. It should be an awesome day in the horseshoe to have uh, have a nice, nice full horseshoe full of fans and uh, bands and cheerleaders and mascots and all the all the good stuff that makes college football, college football. That's all coming up today. Make sure you're on our YouTube channel to uh, watch the pre and post game shows and then uh, on BuckeyeScoop.com for uh, all you know the game thread and all the excitement of an Ohio State football game day. That'll do it for today. Thank you guys for joining us. See you shortly on the uh, pregame show. We'll talk to you later.